Okay, welcome to this video on the 20, um, 2021 um, section B, question B, question B3. So, sorry there, I couldn't find where it was on my screen. So we've got, uh, the image on the right shows the table tennis. It's incomplete trimetric. Okay, so there's three unequal axes and it's a scaling triangle in there. Okay, uh, you, using the axonometric axis method of a similar table tennis to elevation and then you are in the required, shown in the required position. Sorry about the camera screen. Draw the axonometric axis X, Y, and Z and the scaling triangle ABC. Okay, um, so we have to start that in a few moments and we could draw the elevation and view orientated as shown and complete the trimetric projection and then determine the true length of a diagonal. Um, so here's what it looks like when it's solved. So that's what it's going to look like when it's solved. Okay, you can see again, the marking screen gives you a different kind of view of it. Okay, less cluttered lines. So I get started on that now. Okay, so we get our, what's call it, uh, set square. We're going to draw a vertical line through the middle. Okay, we're going to get our protractor now. Just mark there O. And it tells you in the question that there's an angle of 110 degrees. So we're going to get our protractor there and mark the angle of 110 degrees to the end of our y-axis. So 110. Okay, careful not to get any other dimension. Okay, as students can commonly do. Uh, now, we're going to connect that through O. So that's our Z axis there, right? Now we've point uh, we've no points on the triangle yet. We'll start with what to call it the uh, triangle then. Okay, A, B, and C. Right. To get A, it's over 50 from the Y axis. So I'm going to draw a horizontal line. I'm going to mark 50 over. from the y-axis, light line down, and that is point A, okay, that's point A. Then I can draw a horizontal line from A, I'm going to mark 90 millimeters from A then, 90 millimeters from A, and that's going to get me point C, okay, and then also point C is a point on the x-axis. So I now have my x-axis. Now, common what you call it, uh, common in other questions, for example, 2014, would be that they give you this little hint that the axes are perpendicular to the edges of the scaling triangle. No such information was given this year. You would recognize that the edge of the scaling triangle was perpendicular the axis. So I'm going to line up my set square here, okay, with the uh, x axis here. Line it up. I'm going to slide the ax set square on and I'm going to draw a line perpendicular to the x axis from point A. So perpendicular to the x axis from point A. And then that should be, okay, point B. And when you join, join B to C, it should be perpendicular. To, sorry about that should be perpendicular to the z-axis okay there we go right. which mine will be now Okay, and we can start then on getting them in their positions. Okay, the Okay, so I can extend these uh, lines from B and C and O all parallel to the Z axis. 
Okay, the question students might ask is how long should I go on your sheet? So it doesn't have to be an exact dimension, it can be any dimension. A good tip is, right, okay, this is 90, okay, on your question sheet. The purple line here is a little bit less. Okay, so maybe 75 is a good dimension to go out just for speed, room. Okay, you can go out, as I said, you can go out any distance. That's just a little tip for you. So I'm going to draw lines parallel to the O axis, or to the Z axis from, okay, B, O, and C. And then I can draw a line perpendicular to uh, the Z axis. So it's parallel to line BC. Now, roughly 75, I was saying. So that's 70, so roughly about there. So there's the green line there. Okay, I'll do it the other side now. Same concept. This time it's a little bit longer. Okay, that's there. 40, 90, so maybe seven. Uh, no, much, much the same. Sorry, what am I on about? Okay, much the same. Right, there's not much. Only a couple of millimeters of difference. So 75, 80 would be fine. Right, so I'm going to extend them out now. This is not 60 degrees I'm doing it at, just to clarify. So there I've then drawn in. Now I want to get, okay, the center of the semicircle. So I'm going to get my compass. To get the center, I'm going to bisect the line. So to get the center of this, I'm going to bisect the line here. I'm going to bisect that line. So take your compass, okay, set it to the length of the line, okay, and you can swing an arc from both sides, left and right. Many teachers, many students will set their compass to just more than a half way. If you're confused about that, just set it to the length of your line to make your life easy. Now, and then you won't have to think too much of it. So there's your center point. We'll do it the other side now. Okay, it's going to be a slightly different size now. As it's a scalene triangle. Okay, now, careful not to mix them up. So, in fairness, that is why setting it just over more than halfway can help you make it easier. Right, so here's the center point here. I'm get my compass now. I'm going to draw the semicircle in. It goes inside, inside. Many students, especially at junior cycle, using this method, mistake it for the outside, and then we have to change the radius for the next one. Okay, this is a different size. Now. Here's the triangles here, uh, forcing uh, the edge views of the planes of reference to force them into the required positions. Now, this point is when you extend the x-axis until it hits the semicircle. That's very important to know. 
Okay, so again, when you extend the z-axis and it intersects the semicircle, that's where you join to the end points of the diameter. And this force is a 90 degree angle um, for the true shape of the elevation and end elevation because a triangle standing on the diameter with one point on the circumference always is a 90 degree angle. Right, then we can put in, all right, our elevation and end elevation. So, 70 here. Okay, 60 high. So we're marking up 50 and 60. Now, So I'm drawing in the end elevation of the tennis table. So the legs are project, uh, projecting as vertical lines here in end elevation. Okay, here's the net here at the top. There's the table. Uh, surface as an edge. Now, I'll do, okay, I'll do this one. Notice how the center of the semicircular legs are at the end of the triangle here. Okay, so the projection of point A onwards and the radius is 50. So I'm going to mark in 50. I take my compass. There we go. Then the dimensions up are the same. The heights are the same as ele end elevation. So 25, 25, which is 50, and 10, which is 60. So I'm going to mark them up. So 25, 25, and 10. Okay, now, uh, what was I going to do there? I want to mark the center line of the semicircle as well and I'll show you why in a moment. Right, because we want to be able to get the table or the tennis table, tennis net and mirror this across to get work out the total length. So there's half the length there. So I'm going to bring these up now, parallel to the base. So compass now here. There's the edge of the table uh, top, right, the inclined legs, so go up from the end points of the semicircle, so up from the end points of the semicircle, and then where they, the 25 height line intersects them, that's where you can heavy up there. Here's the net here. Okay, then we can start pushing at doing the tabletop. Right, one slash two, three slash four. Okay, one slash three. Okay, two slash four. So to get these, okay, I'm going to project these points from each view parallel to its axis. So all of these are going parallel to the x axis. And all of these here in end elevation are going parallel, or sorry, I'm checking, what was I doing calling this, um, this, the, what was I calling it there?
So this is being presented as the elevation and that one is the end elevation from the axis, even though the SEC should have called that the elevation. This the end elevation should have been orientated a different way. But however, let's bring these down uh, parallel to the Z axis and these ones down parallel to the X axis. So we get going. Okay, so line one to three brought down, line two to four brought down. Okay. Line three and four brought down. Line one and two brought down. And there's the top of the table there. So there we go. Okay, so we could do the net now. Alright, and to be clever, we just need to bring down the top of the net. Okay, from our elevation, we're going to bring this down here. Sorry, I have to go down further with that. Okay, so this, when we go straight up here, we're going to get the top of the net. So if I go straight up there, parallel to the y-axis, I'm going to get the top of my net there. And then likewise from the back of the table. So I can bring that up. There's the net done. Now let's let's do the legs here at the front, right? Just love the drawing. Drawing is class. Right, so we'll bring down the legs there. Okay, the inclined legs, the supports we'll call them. And then we'll bring them down here as well. Remember we're going parallel to the Z axis. Okay, so I haven't marked them in in my elevation. I'm gonna call this uh, A B, okay, C and D. So, up here, these be A slash C, up there for legs, and then the height is the same. So, the 25 and 25. So, this is B and D. Now I'll bring them down. B, so here's B. And D, so follow this line down for D. It can be quite hard to mix these up, or it can be quite easy. So use your set squares sometimes to help you find them. So there's D, and then A I have to get. So you already have a projection line for A and C brought down. So I can just bring A down to there. Okay, and C down creates the table. Now, there's some of the supports there. Right, so what we have to do next then is the cur curve right, on this. So we want to divide our uh, semicircle in our end elevation into our 60-30. So 
So we're going to divide this into 60-30. Class, the way that works out in the same point, it did in AutoCAD as well. Okay, so we've been divided into 60-30 and I label these again, right? So I'm going to go 6, uh, 7, 8, 9, okay, and 10. Right, the elevation and the, or the elevation here and the end elevation share the same height. So what I can do to get 7 and 9 over here, so I can transfer the heights. Okay, so I can transfer heights. So I'm going to take the height of 7 and 9. I'm going to mark it here. So that's the height of 7 and 9. And then B and D are already done. So this is 6 and 10. B and D, 7 slash 9. Okay, and point 8. So now I can bring the height of 7 and 9 down and there uh, 6 and 10 down ok then I'm going to go over to here and bring 6 and 10 down so there's point 6 ok point B is there point 7 ok it's easy to mix these up so be careful There's seven. Okay, here's eight. Okay, right down from the table net. Now, did I get seven in the right place? Yes, I did. Okay, easily mixed up, as I said. Right, nine now we're going to bring down next. So nine. So that's point nine. Okay, then D, and then point ten. Now, point ten. I'm going to freehand sketch these in, so I'll be, I'm will be. i going to just go very lightly there because I will be untaping my sheet to do this. So my pencils are also taped together, so they're not really going to do it accurately here. So I'm going to take this off in a moment. Okay, so you can see very faintly where I've sketched it in. But also now, there are to do. Okay, the curve of the back. Now, here's a point on the curve of the back, like straight, straight down there. So the cleverest way to get the points on the curve of the back is to take the distance here. So that's the width of it between 6 and the back there in the trimetric projection. Take the width, step it back there from each of the points. Okay, so you don't have to do these things again. You see the way they're the same. Right, 9. Okay, now that'll be the curve there, which I'm gonna I'm gonna heavy in later. The next part of the question is to find the true length of the diagonal. So this line here, which projects as an edge there. Now, this height is 70, right? This height is 70. And this has the true length of it, that edge, that's the true length. So if I get my compass and step the 70 up here uh, extend that up I'm going to get the true length. I'm actually just like rotating the surface up because this is the true shape there. So I'm going to do that there. Right? So I'm going to take this 70 I'm going to mark it up here I just move my visualizer up. Oh, she's shadily coming close to the edge. So that was 70. Um, yeah, that was 70. Okay, did I mark 70 up? Yep. And then I can join this to here, point one three. So true length of diagonal. Because this is the true length, TL, 
and this is a true height. Right, as I promised, I'm going to mark this in and then we'll have a little bit of the diagonals uh, marked. So I just want to untape my sheet there and find there's my hinge pencil, right? Or I won't untape my sheet. I'm just going to move myself around. There's that. Now, the inside one. Okay. Go very lightly as we're not going to be heavy in at all. Now, I have to get to a few more there as I've forgotten where they are. There we go. Eight there so you can hardly really struggle to see it from the particular view and try metric did I have seven in the right position and B in the right position sorry I had nine there wrong that's where nine should be D should be 10. So you can see like there at the back, you're obviously not going to see them. Okay, all in there. Okay, and then we have to do the diagonal at the back. So it's back there, back to B. So we can heavy that there, light line there. And then I have to do the diagonal back here and um, sure I'm not going to see any of that so there's no point in marking that in so then you can you can heavy this here okay and there's the question complete and that was Fun, but I'm actually just it's a good thing I checked there because I actually do have a little bit there to mark in I actually have a bit of that curve there ok and you definitely could get dock marks for that so you could that would be somewhere you'd lose marks right cheers thank you bye bye